So, after that island, where did you go next? Oh, we bet you were somewhere exciting. <sighs> Before we keep going, I was thinking maybe you want to let your dad know where you ran off to. I don't want to think about him at all. I want to hear more stories. Uncle Bob. Uh, okay, okay. How about a story with spurs and six shoes and all that? Yeah, that sounds wild. Darling, you don't know the half of it. But whatever the danger, Bob still managed to show the wild and woolly wastelands who was boss. Whoa, now we're talking. The place was hotter than heck, and all that dang dust had a way of working its way up your, um, nose. Point is, I was gonna have to get lean and mean if I was fixing to tame anything in that forsaken desert. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Suddenly, I found myself smack in the middle of this scorching, hot desert. No time to worry over how I ended up there or why. All I knew was I had to run for cover. Um, wasn't it too hot to be running around? Am I telling the story or are you? Sorry. Keep going. Anyway, yeah, it was too hot to run around like that. And I burnt myself out quick. I knew I was a goner. Unless I could scrounge up something to drink, and pronto. Before you judge me on this next part, you gotta understand, it was a life or death situation. Cause when I thought I saw a big whiskey jug sloshing around on six legs, I sort of lost what was left of my pride. And I, uh, well there's no good way to say this, took a drink from it. Ew, gross! <laughs> Made that jug bug jump a mile. Not that I blame it. Who'd have guessed something that big could even fly anyway? At least I knew where to find water now. After I had my fill of drinking from bug behinds, I decided to try for one of the camel lizards I saw waddling around that sand pit. It was probably an easier way to break the dumb beast than smacking them upside the head and force feeding them. But that's what worked for me back on the island. Anyways, I guess I finally hit one in its noggin enough time for it to think we were pals. Aww. I reckon I'll spare you knowing how I figured out a way of drinking from those smelly humps. Without warning, a sandstorm kicked up. I'm talking howling wind. Lightning had me going in circles, trying like heck to find a place to hide. Thought I was done for when Humpty dropped dead on me. Until I spotted a cave for 
Looked like the promised land. <sighs> War hunting. I tripped over a bunch of eggs lying around inside and thought I'd hit the jackpot. And that's when Mama, an honest-to-gosh dragon, turned up. <gasps> oh, no! She was none too happy about me scrambling up her babies. Bet you barely got out of that one without becoming her breakfast. No scrambled Bob on the menu that day! Right about when I'd almost given up hope, I spotted little Miss Professor again. Somehow she'd wound up in that dust patch with me, which probably meant that the dock was around someplace too. But she was glad to see you. Of course, yeah. But now I had someone else to look after, which can be, you know, exhausting. But before I could come up with a plan to save us, this crazy desert witch showed up with a dragon. That dragon witch sure seemed glad I came along when I did. Turned out her town needed a new sheriff. On account of the giant bugs that kept attacking the place. What's a sheriff? Someone who'd protect regular townsfolk, whether it was from rustlers, bandits, or, in this case, bug monsters. I didn't have much of a choice. So I let the witch pin a star on me and set me up with a trusty six-shooter. was the law in that forsaken outpost, I could see I was gonna have to do a bit of pest control. So I called out the biggest bug and told him they best skedaddle before sundown, lest I commence to stepping on them. Now that I had the whole gang's attention, I backed up a few paces and told the gang leader to slap leather. To do what? The figure of speech, darling, means we're about to have us a good old-fashioned shootout. Big bug bandit reached for his pistol, but I had the quicker draw. A couple of his compadres tried to take revenge. Wasn't much of a fair fight. None of them so much as got a beat on me before I dropped all four of them in the dust with their pal. The rest of them scampered off. So I yelled to the ladies that it was safe to come out. And that's when old Doc Rockwell showed up again. After I stopped the bugs from ransacking that whistle stop, I guess I thought maybe I'd found a place worth building up into something. That's when the witch piped up to tell us why it wasn't worth getting attached to no place there. Oh no, why? Said she and her friends had a regular boom town going across the desert that got blown to heck by... something in the sky. She offered to fly us to see the ruins for ourselves. Not sure why I let the professor and the doc talk me into that. After seeing them ruins up close for myself, we decided it probably was time for us to mosey along. We were saying our goodbyes when that thing dropped in. The witch called it a manticore. Or maybe a, a manticlops. Anyway, whatever you want to call it. It caused a real ruckus. 
I like to think we made it sorry for messing with us. But I must have been knocked upside the head during our tussle, because I don't remember the next part so good. Somehow, I was tumbling through the sky again, heading elsewhere in a hurry. So, that's how I went from squeezing water from a cactus, to fighting a Mandy Watsit in a ghost town. Wicked. Just goes to show, you gotta stay ready for the unexpected. And, you always need to stick by the folks who have your back. Didn't you say you tamed wastes all by your lonesome? Well, I had some help. Oh, yeah. You still haven't told me where you met, you know, him. Oh, wouldn't you rather hear that story from the big guy himself? No way! Unlike you, he's got no sense of humor. <sighs> you just sit tight while your Uncle Bob thinks about how to tell this next part without giving nightmares. But I like scary stories! Hey now, I was talking about it giving me nightmares. See, this is the point in our story. Things get dark. Real dark. 